Every month, we pick one lucky commenter and subscriber from all of our unboxings, and they win a £100 on Tabletop gift card. And remember to click that little bell, because that really helps us out. Hi everybody, it's Justin from On Tabletop. I'm here with John, and we are back for more Blood Red Skies. John, Mosquito? The finest piece of flying furniture ever built in Britain. Okay, for those who don't know, <laughs> explain why you just said that. So, the Mosquito, to be a very brief history of it, the Mosquito was a plane that was designed by de Havilland and uh, was presented to the, the Ministry of Defence mm -hmm. in the, the f uh, early 40s. Okay. And the Ministry of Defence went, why would we want this thing? It's made of wood. Nobody uses wooden planes anymore. They use metal. Look at the Spitfire. Look how great that is. And de Havilland was probably mumbling under their breath, what about the hurricane? Um, <laughs> <laughs> half and half. Uh, but what they realised is that they'd stumbled upon something that was really crucial. Mm. The fact that so much metal was going into Spitfire production and other war production. Yeah. There was so much wood in stock just left lying there because no one was using wood from any critical war production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't a critical material. Yeah. So they realized, well, if we build our plane mostly out of wood, we can turn them out dirt cheap. We can minimize costs. Mm -hmm. We can maximize build. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also make a plane, surprisingly, incredibly light. Yeah, that, and they're guaranteed a good supply line. Exactly. So de Havilland went and built this thing. Yeah. Made a, made a, a test version, like a, a, a testable flying version. Yeah. They brought all the MOD down to, like all the chiefs and stuff, yep. and said, watch this. So this thing takes off, comes back over, does a low fast pass above them, you know, knock, no. knocks all their caps off. There is video of this, by the way. Oh, really? It's on YouTube. You see them fly over, and they all sort of grab their hats as this thing <laughs> screams overhead. <laughs> And they're so impressed with how fast and how agile it was, they went, yeah, we'll take that. <laughs> we'll take as many of those as you can make. They ended up being on, an order with no upward limit. Pretty much. Oh, wow. That's what the Americans did. They went, start building planes. How many? Just start building planes. <laughs> it was like that with Mosquito. Yeah. Build as many as you can. Yeah. They went, they've done everything. They've done ground attack. Mm -hmm. They've done high altitude reconnaissance. Mm -hmm. They've done special missions where they've blown the side out of a prison. What? Uh, flying below treetop level half the time as well, doing 400 plus miles an hour. There are times whenever I just think the pilots back then were crazy. The pilots back then really knew how to fly planes. Like, yeah, well, uh, I mean, like, you, you have no electronic guidance no. or anything. It's all by feel. That's the best thing about these sort of planes. It's fly by the seat of your pants, mm -hmm. as a lot of pilots say nowadays when they get into an older style plane. It's yeah. like, I love this because I can feel yeah. the plane moving rather than having to respond to a computer. Yeah, well, well, whenever you watch the documentaries for some of the more advanced planes, there was one that was oh, the old stealth bomber the Americans had. You know that the, really angular one? The F-117. Yeah, there was a test flight of it where I was watching a documentary. And the chase plane on this test flight got onto the pilot asking, is everything okay? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You know, sticks just a tiny wee bit heavy. Why? Like, it's, it's all right. You've just you've lost one of your your ailerons at the back there. And he was just like, oh, I hadn't noticed. The computer was so good. Yeah. It just <laughs> adjusted for it. But mosquito. Yeah. Mosquito. Everything about mosquito. Yeah. It had machine guns. It yeah. had cannons. The later version of it had a two pounder anti tank gun what? fitted into it. <laughs> so it was a small anti tank gun. Just, but it, just for kicks. It was an automatic firing cannon as well. It, so it just so, had a magazine? Yeah, it was a superb oh. piece of equipment, this plane. Well, I mean, like the, the artwork, as always, is just beyond yep. gorgeous. And I mean, what, what you really get with Mosquito mm. is two Spitfires welded together, but welded together with wood. <laughs> so you have two Rolls Royce Merlin engines that are pumping out God only knows how much horsepower. <laughs> Onto something that is essentially a kite. <laughs> okay. So it is going to be fast. Yeah. It is going to be as agile as you think it would be. All right. Uh, if you just give me a sec, I'm, I'm replacing stuff in the die cut because the... The die cut is really loose and falls out. Yeah, but that's, that's a bonus for me because it means you're not going to ruin your tokens. So yep. we have our pilot boards. Mm -hmm. uh, we have markers for activation, markers for damage, and markers for army and range. Yeah. That's all we need to know about that. Mm -hmm. You, sir, have the miniatures. I have our handy-dandy bases, which I always like showing these just because they're such a clever thing. You don't have to build them. You can just mark advantage, disadvantage, and neutral yep. so, so easily, and then change out your boards. Yep. We then have these, which are all of our cards, which I'll take a second to open now. If John, do you want to show off the mini? Yeah, sure. I'll show you off the mini. So this is it straight out of the box. 
standard grey plastic, it's pre-assembled, it, it does seem to come in two parts because there's a little bit of a split here that shows just under the belly, so it's maybe a two-part piece. Mm -hmm. um, but it comes like this straight out of the box. You just need to tidy it a little bit here and there. The mold lines are quite minimal. Uh, you just need to watch wherever the uh, the gate locations are. She has Perdido. Yeah, it is a lovely, lovely flame. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll move this out of the way and then yep. you can so, show me the cards. Cards. So for stat-wise, uh, three on the attack, two on the maneuverability, and seven on speed. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got your special abilities here. You get two of these cards, and on the back, you've actually got a little bit of the history of the plane. Yeah. Which is, it's nice little touches like that in historical gaming that just make you feel you can drop in a little easier. It makes, it makes history light. Yeah. It lets you know what you're playing with without yeah. giving you a book. Yeah. Uh, you get your ability cards. So these are aircraft traits. So it's got deep pockets. Mm -hmm. So do you want to read deep pockets? I'll read deep pockets. So to play in reaction to a deep pocket squadron receiving a boom chit, do you? The boom chit is disregarded. Awesome. So that's nice. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it is also an agile aircraft. Mm -hmm. So if I remember right, uh, yep. Yeah. On an agile plane during its activation, the aircraft suffers none of the multi-engine aircraft penalties this turn. So you can make it fight like a, a single-engine fighter. Yep. The last one is your doctrine, and for this one, it's high-altitude performance. Mm -hmm. So uh, air forces with climb a climb advantage use special tactics to exploit it and gain a tactical edge. Mm -hmm. uh, so bonus great climb. Uh, on an advantage-friendly plane using the outmaneuver pilot action, the pilot gains plus two to their skill for the attempt. Mm -hmm. So that's just a nice little buff and bonus. That represents mosquitoes being so powerful, like the, mm. the engines were almost too powerful for the planes. Really? Were yeah. they trying to go in the plane and not keep up? The, the, the wings would have taken off by themselves if, <laughs> if they hadn't bolted them down right. Mm. Uh, well, one of the most terrifying things you ever showed me was a, an aircraft engine on a runaway. Yes. And it just goes woo! Yep, that's a jet though. Um, but mosquitoes, mm. another role they did, yep. just because I love talking about it. <laughs> they played dummy bomber formations really? over Germany. And they dropped this stuff called window. And if you don't know what window is, it was a way of confusing enemy radar. Right. And it's the most simple thing in the world. Tinfoil? It's a giant bundle of tinfoil <laughs> cut, cut into like eight by two inch strips. Yeah. And each mosquito would dump these along a predetermined route. Uh, and the German radar would look at it and go, that's the, that's the target for tonight. That's where the Lancasters are going. Right. In reality, it was actually a squadron of maybe 24 mosquitoes. Just binning this that stuff. Were, that were binning this stuff at intervals to make it look like the bomber formation was moving somewhere. Uh, so when the fighters came up to intercept them, like the Messerschmitt 110s, yeah. there was nothing to be found because the mosquitoes had been told that they were taking off and had just climbed out of the way and headed for home, went back home at <laughs> 400 plus miles an hour. See, some of the different <laughs> tactics that were used during World War II were so innovative just mm -hmm. to, to catch out those older technologies while they were still being learned to be used. Yep. Oh, yeah, you've got the primed one. So we have the primed one here. The uh, panel lines are so sharp in this. They are. They're far sharper in the hard plastic miniatures than they have been in the softer plastic ones. Mm. Uh, the mold lines really wasn't much to talk about, really. Mm. And it, God. Yeah. You see that coming at you at like 300 miles an hour, and it's yeah. firing cannons at you. you know, that's, that's a bad day to be someone that isn't in this plane. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I'm, I'm just thinking the, the late war variant that had an anti-tank gun. I mean, like, was it for ground attack or for shooting at other aircraft? Oh, ground attack. Okay. Absolutely. He'd be strafing down on stuff. So at, <laughs> oh, there's a Panzer three or four, pop one into its turret. There, there's a tank, let's go kill it. <laughs> um, but the fact that this thing had a mixture of machine guns and cannons, and it had four of each, you know, so it, oh. it was a lot of 20 mil yeah. that it was thrown so into. So it the, could put yeah. out a hill of lead. And how many of these would fly together in a squadron, I wonder? A squadron could be about 12 or... Well, up, up to 20 of these things could be in the air at any one time doing something. Right. <laughs> so that's 20 times four cannon or whatever firing at you. Would they have it a mix or would they have all been the same? Uh, the only thing they would have mixed up would have been the type of ammunition each gun was firing within uh -huh. one plane. Okay. So one gun might have been firing a mix of incendiary and armor pierce, the other one would have been firing solid shot and something else. Ah, oh, okay. Or tracer or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's clever. Well, that, so, that was the thing as well. With these planes, you had to have the, the tracer rounds mixed into the, the actual links, yep. just so you could see where the hell your stream of fire was going. But again, it shows you how versatile the, the Merlin engine was for the oh, British. Yeah. It, it was it one of was the best engines of the war. Spitfire, Mosquito, Hurricane, Lancaster, yeah. all powered by the Merlin. Yeah. And it was a, a great engine for a whole rake of great planes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, everybody, I tell you what, drop your comments in below. Tell us what you think of the Mosquito. Uh, John is in love with it. A big fan. Yeah. Uh, we'll move on. We'll see you again soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe? And remember... 
to Ding or Dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.